Um, welcome to IQI Property Zone. My name is Jen Tang, and along with me we have Sean Lee. So, yeah, hi. So, um, today's topic is on something that is very interesting and a very hot topic. Uh, one week ago, our finance minister, Mr. Lim Guan Eng, has announced on Budget 2020. And there's a lot of, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of hoo ha on uh, Budget 2020 because a lot of people focuses, uh, focus a lot on the highlights and uh, jump into conclusion without understanding the details. So today, uh, being in the real estate market, uh, we have analysed uh, some of the details on budget uh, 2020. And today we have Sean Lee, who has very vast experience in, um, the, uh, in this area because every year you study very detailed on the budget 2020. And um, today, very glad to be here in this discussion and learn from Sean Lee. Yeah? Um, so, uh, before I start, I would also like to share that today, Zone uh, Property Zone Live, we are giving away a special gift for those for a pers for the person who share this live clip the most. And the special gift is uh, Russell Taylor's uh, hand blender. All right. So remember to share this uh, clip. The one who share the most will get a free gift, and the free gift is Russell Taylor's blender. All right. So, okay, coming back to this topic, um, because personally, when I got the budget 2020, there's so many things to study, and I do a quick review, and I find that there are a uh, few main highlights that is directly related to uh, the property market. And uh, one, of the, one of the main highlight is on the foreigner threshold, right? Yeah. Uh, it says that, um, the entry level for foreigners to buy property in urban areas uh, usually at 1 million but now it's reduced to 600k and that to me it's a, a, a good news because when people look at the highlight people will say wow now we can actually um, sell our property to foreigners so in that way we can let go of our property easier but I'm sure that uh, a lot of us we focus a lot on the de uh, the main highlight but we forgot on the details so uh, may I know what what are your views on this um, main highlight the foreigner threshold part okay. yeah thanks Jen hello everyone um, actually talking about budget 2020 uh, before I go into the details Actually, a lot of people are sometimes are confused or mm. may not be so clear. Actually, what's budget 2020? 2020, correct. Or what's budget? Yeah. Okay, but budget basically is spelled out the movement of the government next year onwards. So next year, yeah. Most of the things that actually spelled out or being announced in budget 2020 will only take effects starting from 1st of January. Mm -hmm. So that's not now, but you need to wait until after 1st of January. Yes. Now, a lot of things in the budget as well in the announcement are not cast on the stone. Mm. Uh, sometimes, you know, there will be some changes. There could mm -hmm. be table a supplementary budget as well. Okay. For example, there's a shortfall collection of revenue. Right. They may table another one. Yeah. But for now on, we just focus on the budget. Yep. Right? So budget basically, in short, they will tell us what's the government's uh, movement in 2020, how much revenue they expect to collect. Okay. Of course, revenue in general, there will be taxes. Mm. In, but now we have SST, personal income tax, yeah. corporate tax, so on and so forth. So, and also they'll tell us after collection of this and how much they want mm. to spend and mm. which area. So in general, mm. the spending here, we are looking at two kind of expenditure. Mm. The first one, of course, we're talking about operation expenditure. Okay. Of course, from the household point of view, you're running a household, right? After you collect your salary, for the household, mm -hmm. and then you want to spend the money. Operation expenditure is something that once we spend it, you can almost kiss the money goodbye. Okay. It's forever. Yeah. All right? Got so it. some of the things is to pay the government servant salary, yeah. bonus, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, the, the other part of the expenditure is on the development. Actually, if uh, any idea budget, mm -hmm. more spending should be towards development. Although we are seeing some drop on the portion of operation expenditure, we are seeing also a slight increase on the development expenditure, which is uh, looking at 56 
Experience. 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 This experience. Yeah. Sorry for the correction here. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, this healthy one. Oh. So, so every every year you will have a very clear budget on these two. Yes. They will adjust Basically, this most of the economists or analysts they were looking at. Okay, if the government want to spend money, mm -hmm. do they spend on a good one? Okay. If you spend the money and you will see your money back, if return with interest, mm. there's good spending. Yeah. So in so this case, we try to focus more on the development mm. expenditure. So okay. let's talk about the threshold that you mentioned. Yeah, directly impactful on Direct the property impactful. market. Okay. market. Everyone was talking about it. <laughs> okay, right. I hope you guys can see foreign threshold reduced to 600,000 right. from 1 million. Before I start, uh, if you have followed Malaysia Kini yeah. and you can see some of the things, uh, they actually vote on the announcement. This is actually voted at the most unpopular policy. Yes, you heard me right. Okay. Most unpopular policy. Why? Very okay, simple. Yeah. Okay, you know, in Malaysia, mm -hmm. we categorize two groups of people from right. property point of view. One is the one that hope the property prices to go up because they're probably owning multiple property. Okay, interesting. Property yeah. prices go up, it's good for them. Mm. Correct or not? Correct. The other one is they have not owned a property or they are looking to buy more property in the immediate future. Yeah. What they hope for? Low price. Property yeah. comes down. Okay. So, I think majority of the group of people are actually in the second group. They are looking to buy property. Yeah. yeah right. True. So their concern is if their target is to aim for those property, let's say above six hundred thousand. Now they face competitor. Mm. So, competitor from where? Foreigners. From outside Malaysia, foreigner. So yeah. that make them like, oh no, if this. 600,000 above mm -hmm. is facing competition from foreigner mm -hmm. it's unlikely the price is going to come down correct correct so they have this concern yeah. so that's why when government make this announcement we have a lot of uh, home buyer association we have general public yes. actually quite disagree with this correct all right but let me just talk a bit about this in details mm. Although we live in KL, most of us are uh, at the moment and in our position, we have to understand that if we look at Malaysia as an overall picture, mm -hmm. there's currently less than 3%, yes, less than 3% foreign buyer. That means that only less than 3% of Malaysian property is owned by foreigner. Right. So by any statistic, it's actually quite a insignificant amount. Will this change the percentage? We don't know yet. Okay, mm. but you would understand this as well. When foreigner to buy uh, a property, you put yourself in your shoes. You want to buy yeah. a property outside country, outside Correct. Malaysia. Is the threshold your only concern? May not. It may not, mm. right? So you have other concerns. Is you look at the ROI. Sometimes you also will be considered about the currency. Yes, correct. So you because that's invest a long the long term. Yes, a long term one. Right. Because if you invest in a country, if the pro, uh, the country's currency is going to depreciate along the way, mm -hmm. you may lose out. Yeah. That's the first thing. Second thing, a lot of people are tying up property purchase mm. and a permanent residence. For example, MM2H. Yeah. Right. These are two separate things. In Malaysia, foreign to buy a property and to apply for MM2H, Malaysian yeah. my second home are totally okay. different, separate issue. Mm. Unlike certain places like Greece, if you actually buy a property in Greece, yes. up to a certain amount, you'll be go given a golden visa. Oh, so okay. that will make invest in Greece a mm. lot more popular, a lot mm -hmm. more forwarding. Because yeah. once you get a you know, visa in Greece, you can travel around Europe. So this is basically uh, Another consideration for foreign buyer, not just the threshold, but also the currency strength yeah. and also you know, able to stay here for 5-10 years, mm -hmm. which is totally a separate thing in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And okay. then and buying a home in Malaysia is separately. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, when this thing come out, of course, a lot of people are making mm -hmm. a, a arguments that you know, government is trying to help the developer who can't sell the property. But we have to understand the fact that a mm -hmm. lot of listed developers are uh, are actually partly owned by Go government link corporation. So in this case, if these developers are not doing good, the government yeah, link corporation over will be suffering. Correct. So at the end, when the government suffer, the mm -hmm. right also suffer. It's actually a chain effect mm -hmm. per se. So sometimes we cannot just look at the thing is like helping the developer itself, but right, in right. a 
when the things start moving, it's actually good for the overall economy and it's also good for the whole country. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're actually owning a property now, which is currently above 600,000, a lot of people mm -hmm. can I now sell to a foreigner. Yeah. The That's answer a, at the moment, a... and has been clarified by our finance minister, the yes. answer is no. Why? Because the intention of the government is basically to clear the unsold stock at the moment mm -hmm. and really up to 8.3 billion. Yeah. So, in other words, so those you can only buy for as a foreigner, as a foreigner, you can only buy unsold overhang units from the developer. That means it's been completed but unsold. In the yeah, so there stock. are restrictions here because once we, we have uh, seen this highlight, everyone was like, oh, now I can sell it. Yeah. And we focus a lot on the main highlights without understanding the detail that there are restrictions. They are only limited to properties that are sub-sales and new project, correct? Yeah. Not, so that, that's, not applicable to oh, sub-sales. Sorry, not applicable to sub-sales. And, and not, not applicable to new project. Yeah. For unsold or overhang units Completed. from developer and so by developer. So this is the moment that foreigner can buy in this group. Yeah. yeah. And okay, um, so on the first highlight here, uh, you're saying that this actually does not directly mean that there is a inflow of foreigner investment or investors to Malaysia because this threshold is not the only factor that foreigners will consider because yeah. they can't be just making decisions based on the threshold. That's more yes, like a long-term yes, thing, yes. right? And the second part most important is I see that a lot of people have misconception uh, on the units that they can now sell to foreigners, their property, but uh, take note that this is only applicable to unsold and overhang units, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Summarize that. Okay, um, thanks, uh, Sean. And then the, there's also another guideline that is also related to uh, real estate, there are, there are a few. But the second one is on the youth housing scheme. It says that uh, government can now provide 10% guarantee through, through Chagamas to end, uh, on the financing part. Yeah. Can you explain further on that? Because, okay, let me just flip yeah. the chart for easy okay. understanding. Huh? Okay, this is the one you mentioned about the mm, youth yeah. housing scheme. Okay, basically now, at this moment, if you want mm. to buy a house, if you can borrow up to 90%, mm -hmm. you still have to come up with 10% down payment. Right. This is a general Correct. thing, right? So, in order to encourage, to boost up the whole, uh, the house ownership, yeah. especially among the youth, young mm -hmm. people, so the government actually has set up this, they will actually provide a 10% guarantee, which is for your down payment. Right. right? And through this government agency called Chakamas. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if you are qualified under this, you basically can get a full financing zero down payment and on top of that you get 200 ringgit assistant monthly for two years let's say for example you buy a house and it fall under less than 300,000 let's mm -hmm. say your monthly installment is 1,003 right 1,003 okay now with the assistant of the government minus of the 200 so every month 1,003 minus 200 1,001 1,001 yeah. so basically it makes the down payment easier now mm -hmm. by having this 10%. It right. also helps to ease out on the mortgage installment, at least the for burden. the first two years, the burden. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's only for the first two years, right? The, only for the first two years. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, does this apply to all the property in Malaysia? Only uh, less it has to be less than 300,000. All the properties that is less than 300,000. Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right, that's great. Okay. Mm, I think that's uh, good news for a lot of uh, young people because that definitely lessened the burden. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, another one on a very famous topic on RPGT. Um, what are the new changes um, by this uh, budget 2020 year? Okay. You know, uh, you, can you explain further? Because uh, there are some changes in terms of date on the 5%, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. I think RPGT, most people are familiar with the term RPGT, basically yes. it stands for Real, Real Property, Property Gain, Gain Tax. Yeah. And the intention of this policy, the RPGT, basically is to curb speculation. Okay. So that means that if you own a property mm -hmm. and you sell it within five years, yeah. you pay tax. Correct. Right? According to the, you know, the yes, period, according to the, the first three or the, the yeah. most hefty one. But the policy when they announced last year for this yeah. year, right. a budget, 
they make the people even who own the house more than five years, they mm -hmm. still have to pay tax. Correct. Uh, RBGT. So a lot 5%. of people are complaining. Yeah. So it becomes a tool. It deviates from the original purpose of curbing the speculation. It becomes a revenue collection scheme okay. for the government. Yeah. Just imagine you buy a house 1970s mm -hmm. and you sell this year. The house is appreciated so much. Right even just a 5% mm. on the gain. So a lot of people are a lot actually to pay. a lot to pay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now the government did some ev uh, rev revision and uh, let's take a look at the highlight of 2020. Okay. okay? Next. Next. Okay. Uh, it may look complicated, but it's okay. Just bear with me. I'll explain to you step by step. Okay. So RPGT, the most the most important and the most impactful one is actually to change the tax base year to 1st January 2013. Okay? Now what it means? I, I probably can help to illustrate more by giving an example. Let's say Mr. A. Mm -hmm. Mr. A? Mr. A bought a property in 1998. Alright? Right. For 220000 Okay. Right? The property appreciated in the year become 250,000 right. and you know that from the period between 2008 to 2013 our Malaysia property prices was on a rocket drive yeah. and the price shoot up to 700,000 okay this is a real life example huh? 700,000 in the year of 2013 but the growth the appreciation has slowed down all right even though it's a gain and 2019 the property is about 780,000 all right of right. course, now we're still in 2019, but I'm just saying that let's say even nothing much has changed mm -hmm. in the first quarter of 2020, the price also remained at 780,000. Basically, this is the property prices at different year. Now, the budget last year we talked about, uh, which are uh, implemented in this year, mm -hmm. basically it's like this. If you own a property before 2000, all right, and if today you sell it in the year of 2019, for 780,000. Mm -hmm. They will calculate your acquisition cost. Right. At year 2000, which is 250. The, the, the red line basically tell you is how much mm -hmm. the government going to tax you this year if you sell a property this year. So, if, if you hold for the more than 5 years, that means the RBGT tax is actually 5%. 5%. Correct. But 5% on what? Now, the 5% mm -hmm. will be Under. using your selling price. Yeah. 780,000. Minus, minus 250,000, which is 530,000. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we are looking at how much? 5%. Uh, 5, 525 is actually looking at 26.5K. Of course, I'm talking about gross. Uh, there are some deduction can be. Uh, we have not taken into consideration. Right. But this is the gross RPGT tax you need to give to government. Mm. All right? Correct. So of course, as a property owner, if you own a property for such a long time, mm. you'll feel heartache. Yeah. Now, the moving forward part is actually changing the tax base year to 2013. So, if now I decide not to sell this year, right. I only sell next, next year. year after 1st of January 2020. Yeah. Okay? I know we are still in 2020, 2019, but let's three say three more months. Three more months. We still sell the property at the same price. 780,000. Mm -hmm. But now, the RPGT, the 5%, will be taxed on the market value at the 1st January of 2013. So, what we'll do is, they will actually tax on the 780,000 minus 700,000, which is 80,000. 80 5% on the 80,000 is how much? Four. That's a lot of difference. Kay. Now, yeah. with this, can you see a big major difference? Definitely a big major difference. So if you are a property owner now, and if you are not in hurry to sell mm. your property, and especially your property is hold more than, more than five years and before 2019, yeah. I think there's a smart choice to make to hold on the property and sell it next, next year. year. Okay. So mm. I think in the sub sale market, if those owners are aware of the change in the tax base year, they will probably have to be patient a bit for a few more months. 
I think this is also a very good news for a lot of uh, property owners, right? That yeah. has uh, they have properties that they bought before. Some people yeah. term it, oh, they finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> because this 5% was introduced last year and there's a big hoo-ha in the market. Yeah. And they were like thinking, oh, the market is going tougher and tougher. But with this, definitely, again, it's going to lessen the burden. Yeah. yeah. So in And some, then yeah. you talk about RBGT, which is one of the main topics for budget from the property mm -hmm. perspective. Of course, this one is the first. Right. The second one is actually with this, ah. Uh, it will be definitely benefit to those uh, who bought property between this period first from the January. 1st of January 2000 can see that. until 31st yeah. December 2012. Why? Because they will move their tax base here to the 1st of January 2013. Okay? If yeah. your property acquisition is calculated at 250000 and your property acquisition cost it's calculated at 700,000, uh, there will be a whole total difference. difference. Yeah. So the direct impact will be in terms of the shifting of the date, right? From January 2000 to December. And people who bought during this period, yeah. they are, when they pay RBGT when they sell property, mm -hmm. their acquisition cost will... Based on 2013. Yes. Right? Yeah. Good news. Yeah. Okay, um, just a reminder before we continue. So uh, we have a special gift for anyone who shares this live clip the most. Uh, you will be given a free gift, and that's the Russell Taylor's blender. All right, from IQI. So yeah, share share the live clip. <laughs> okay, so uh, coming to our next question, there is also a lot of inquiry about the rent to own scheme. Yeah, and uh, also a lot of uh, confusion about that. Uh, can can you perhaps share your view and explain a little bit about the scheme? Okay, rent to own, in short, we call RTO. Yeah. Basically, is another government initiative to boost up the house ownership. They want okay. more people to buy a house they call their own, mm. right? So as you know now, what's the biggest challenge for people to buy a house? I think they come to two parts. Down the payment. first, the down payment. Yeah. The second part is could be the associated cost. For right. example, the loan stamp duty, mm. the MOT, yeah. and all these things, right? So with this, what the government did is actually they provide this initiative, all right? The funding from all the financial institutions like banks, right? They come up with a total amount of mm -hmm. 10 billion. 10 billion is not a small amount, right. all right? So with this, 30% or 3 billion is guaranteed by the government. How okay. does the RTO works, rent to own works? Basically, it's like this. If today I want to buy a property, let's say 400,000, has to be first home and below 500,000. Let's say I'm with my first home, yeah. I'm buying for 400,000. Mm -hmm. I don't have 40,000. Right. And I could not even come up with extra money to pay mm -hmm. for the MOT and uh, associated costs. So what I do is if I participate in this rent to own is basically I sign a tenancy agreement. You rent first? I rent first okay. from the developer. Mm -hmm. And during this five years period, if I decide there's an increase in my salary and I build up my secrets, the, mm -hmm. the good payment behavior record, mm -hmm. at any given point of time, I can actually, you know what? I think I want to take up this property. I want to buy this property. Mm -hmm. And the price will be based at the price mm -hmm. during the tenancy agreement is signed. That means if this year is 2019, mm -hmm. I, I go into the rent to own for five years. Right. At the third year, right? If I want to buy, I can still buy at the price, original price at 400,000. Even property three years later is valued at 500,000. Wow, so it's value at the yes, entry. Value the, added. So the in this case, it, it encourage the home ownership. People who cannot afford to buy mm -hmm. now yet, they can choose to own, but their price is fixed. Right, oh. right. And the previous rental uh, record is treated as a secret record. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. Okay. And how, how do people usually ap uh, apply this? Does it apply to all the homes that is below 500,000? Okay, at the moment, property? what they do is that they actually have a, a, a panel. Oh, so, yeah. just for example, you know, the latest one is called House Ownership Campaign, uh -huh. HOC, that you can any, only buy and participate in this with the participating panel developers. Oh, okay, ah, okay. okay. Yeah. 
So something new for the uh, homeowners, the first homeowners only, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The next thing is uh, in terms of HOC. Yeah. I've heard that there's also some updates uh, in budget 2020 on HOC. So. Um, what is your view on that and what is the direct implication? Actually, mm -hmm. um, in the budget of 2020, they did not put any amendment on the house owner because okay. it's going to come to end, okay. uh, end of the year. Mm -hmm. and, but they did give an update because uh, through the house ownership is another initiative. Okay. It's all initiative to right. boost the house ownership. Yeah. So the house ownership, basically what they do is, if I'm buying a house mm -hmm. now from the HOC, mm -hmm. you, under the HOC, right. panel developers, okay. right? This developer must be able to reduce their price by giving 10% discount. Okay. So in right, other words, right. uh, if I'm the buyer, immediately I save the 10%, right? Yeah. And on top of that, uh, the loan stamp duty will be with the government. Okay. All right. And most important is the memorandum of transfer. In short, we call MOT, is mm -hmm. also be with. So through this HOC, they have this property expo and so on and so forth. They basically encourage people to go and view the house find the house they like, mm -hmm. they get a 10% uh, discount and then also they will actually uh, be waived on the MOT and the loan stamp duty. Now, just the budget that I mentioned is actually about update what has been going on this year All right, through right, this the HOC. HOC. They have an initial sales target of 3 billion, 3 billion, 3 billion. right? But through the campaign period, uh, they're able to hit the sales target mm -hmm. over subscription by almost four times. They sold in total 13.5 okay. 13 billion versus their initial sales target of 3 billion. So you're saying that the initial HOC plan was to boost up the sales target and the sales target was set at 3 billion, but after so far, the update was it's over, over the target 13.5. That's a lot. Yeah, but of yeah. course now some of them are still going through the loan application part, you know. but oh. at least on the booking side, mm -hmm. they have hit the target 13.5 billion. Yeah. Okay, all right. So I see that um, in this few main highlights, uh, yeah. um, from what from your sharing, it is actually quite optimistic to the market. Yeah. And what is your overview from this uh, impli uh, the budget 2020? What's the direct implication? What's your overview on the property market? I think the overall the immediate. Mm respond you can see how the market is treating the the budget is actually reflected on the stock market the stock market the stock market okay. has been doing pretty good this 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 week as compared to the oh, closing yeah. of okay. last week right oh. so i think in general the market is quite optimism yeah but of course there are some um highlight as well if i can call mm -hmm. it is um you can see this budget governments is try to help the uh, loosen up the burden for the right. b40 the bottom 40 income they give them incentive, mm -hmm. they give them subsidy and, and all. I think this is in line with the government agenda just put up not too long ago about yeah. share prosperity. Okay. Share prosperity. Uh, but some of the analysts, what they put in, they say that uh, while it's good for uh, to help up the poor people or the, the one in the group of B40, the bottom mm -hmm. 40, the government should be more proactive in to help to elevate their income status. Right. How to get out from the B40 to move up to and right, 40, right. I think that will be another highlight and yes. uh, hopefully next year with the government yeah, it's, budget. It's more interesting to see how uh, the government is taking initiative yeah. to move people from that level, B40 to mid-level. Yeah, yeah? Because it's, it, it's never a good policy, uh, oh. it never be a sustainable long-term mm -hmm. policy to keep on subsidizing mm. uh, the bottom group without elevating their income status. I think this is actually the, 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 the way forward. Uh. Ultimate goal, yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct. Okay, so yeah, um, today we've covered quite a few highlights. The main highlights that um, previously we have discussed and we thought it's um, quite directly impactful to the property market. So first we talk about the foreigner threshold. Um, um, it's reduced from the 1 million entry cap to 600k. And then we talk about the youth housing scheme also. And uh, also the RPGT uh, matters that um, the shifting of the date, right? That actually impact a lot on the amount of uh, tax that we are paying, okay? And also the rent to own uh, scheme. Yep. And also uh, very good updates on the HOC, 
all right, boosting up the sales target, the property sales from 3 billion to 13.4 billion. Anything else on top of all this that you would like to I add I think you on? pretty much cover most of it. Yeah. Ah, lucky price again. Oh Don't yeah. Um, so have you been sharing? <laughs> So remember that those for those uh, for the person who share the most uh, on this live click will get a special gift, which is the Russell Taylor's blender. All right. So I guess that marks the end of today's session, and I'm very happy to be uh, part of this session, learning from Sean Lee directly on this uh, topic, the hot topic on budget 2020. All right. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and um, till then, see you next session. See you. Thank <laughs> bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.